Welcome to this short lecture on the embryology of the nervous system. So in this particular lecture we will look at the general development of the central and briefly the peripheral nervous system. There are kind of three main learning outcomes for this particular uh, lecture and the first being the formation of the brain vesicles and the folding of the brain itself. Number two is how the neural tube forms and causes the creation of all the cells in particularly the central nervous system. So that's almost more like histology of the neural tube. And then finally we'll finish in number three being the positional change of the spinal cord itself. So let's go across to this image. Now this, these two images we used in the introduction of embryology or the embryogenesis. So if we look firstly here, now this is about three weeks. We've got the top blue, which is the ectoderm, the underneath black, which is the endoderm, and then we've got the mesoderm now filling up in the middle, which you can see here as well. So it's coming in from the epiblast in. The, essentially, the epiblast will make all layers, but in this case, we've got the three layers in, in place now. So the mesoderm is now filled up the middle, so you've got your three germal layers intact. Now, this is cutting through in a cross section and if you were then to fold it back and look down that's the view we've got here so we've got the endoderm underneath endoderm here going down to the yolk sac going down to the yolk sac and then the ectoderm reflecting up like so in the amniotic cavity so towards the end of the third week we've created the mesoderm but what happens down in the midline, right down the middle of the embryo, is this big bar of tissue known as the notochord. The notochord gives the, the, by the symmetry, should I say, of the embryo. So that will allow it to have a right and left side and go right down the middle of the embryo. Now this notochord, in about the third week, will start to cause a change in the thickness of the ectoderm right adjacent to it. So right behind it, it starts to cause this really undifferentiated growth on the ectoderm like so. And that's going to cause a neural plate to form. So that's a big thickening to form. Now that thickening, as we move, we'll move up to this image, will cause the cells in that region to start to fold up like this. So this is the beginning of the neural the cresting or it's, it's kind of cresting up or folding up. So this is the neural fold coming up into a, like a wave. So you can see it cresting up like so. The rest of it will continue across like that. That's the amniotic going up like that and that's just the top layer like so. So all you need to know at this point is around the third week the ectoderm due to the influence of the notochord will cause not only the plate to form, the thickening, but it will start to cause the, the plate to start to fold up like a wave. Okay. Now, if we go across and look at this image, what we'll see, what you need to get your head around to see this image is here is the head end, here is the tail end. So this is again a sagittal cut. So it's like the embryo's heads here and the tails at the back end. Now if I was to look down on the embryo, this is the view you would get. So you're looking down on the embryo like so. So this is the amnion, this is all the amniotic cavity or sac folding to close it all in. So where it's starting to crest up, and almost closed like a circle is happening right there. And this is where the tube will finally close. And so these are cells around like that. So it's an enclosed tube completely surrounded by these cuboidal shaped cells, which are the neuroepithelium. And where that first closes is in the cervical region of the embryo. So in this region of the embryo is where it first closes and that's at about day 21, okay? Now what will happen here is this closure will start to zip shut both cranially and, and zip shut cordally. So that will start to close, close, close and close, close, close on both directions. Now as it starts to zip shut, there's two ends that are left open. This allows the communication between the neural tube 
in with the amniotic cavity. So it can kind of cycle through with the fluid or the amniotic fluid or the future um, CSF that's going to be made in that tube. Now the top end, before it closes shut, is called the cranial neuropore and the bottom end is called the caudal neuropore. Now eventually it will close, it will close shut firstly up here. Now at about day 25 it will close up at the cranial end and about two to three days later it will close down at the caudal end. Now where it closes cranially, if we go across to this image, so this is the neural tube here, like so, where it will close is about there. And so that's in the actual adult now, it's a structure known as the, the, the lamina terminalis. So that's kind of getting close to the pituitary gland. So that's going to close day 25, day 27 um, quarterly. Now, this is highly dependent on temperature. So if the mother is too hot, so if she has a fever, or there's, some, there's been some research to, to show that mothers who were to have a sauna in about day 25, the cranial neuropore failed to close. And what that would result in is that wouldn't close shut and therefore the, the, the embryo would develop anencephaly, which would be fatal and end in stillbirth. Whereas in the caudal neuropore, that's more dependent, its closure is more dependent on folic acid. So if the mother was deficient in folic acid, it probably wouldn't close or would have issues with its closure. And that would give different degrees of what we call spina bifida. So that's essentially how it closes. Um, just before it closes, this is just an in interesting point to be aware of. Before it closes, as it's starting to crest up, a group of cells, just as it's closing, will migrate on either side to sit here and then they can move further and they are called the neural crest cells. We'll talk about them a little bit later. So we've closed the neural tube now and so what we can do is move across to these final two images for the first learning outcome. So what we can see is the neural tube has closed here and this is now moving in a sagittal, so another sagittal section through like this, but we're just focusing on the neural tube now. So this is the neural tube coming up um, and it continues to go into the brain or the future brain. Now what happens is, because we now have shut it at least cranially, what will happen is the tube can't get any longer or bigger in it. And so you need to make all the cells in your central nervous system and so the only way you can kind of make more cells is to dilate it outwards. And so at about, about week three, week three and a half, we get three kind of dilations, three primary brain vesicles, okay? So we can come across here and we can draw that in. So the neural, the neural tube will effectively develop the brain and develop the spinal cord okay now in the brain where we've had the closure of the cranial neuropore there's three main vesicles or dilations start to form and these are what we call the primary vesicles the first one the big vesicle at the top this is called the pro procephalon procephalon the one in the middle, about here, is called the mesencephalon, mesencephalon. And then the last one, which is kind of here down, that's called the rhombencephalon. Now, the reason why they're called that, pro is before, mes means middle, rhomb is rhombus, so it's its shape. So they're the three primary vesicles or the primary dilations. So you've got dilation one, dilation two, dilation three, and then we, then we go down into the spinal cord. Um, what, you can, what you can else see here is you can see this notochord coming all the way up. The notochord, which is this structure here, so in this section it's coming all the way up and ends just at this point here. What you can also see here is you've got kind of a growth coming out of the neural tube at the proencephalon 
And so what's that going to be? That's going to be the infundibulum, which is the outgrowth of the hypothalamus. And what you can see coming in here, this is a kind of pouch coming from the black, which is the endoderm. So this is what, this is the tube of the mouth coming to a pouch here like so. And this is going to be the mouth of the um, baby. So this is the start of the endoderm. The endoderm makes the entire gastrointestinal tract. So the mouth all the way through the anus is coming through here. But you can see the pouch going backwards to meet the dilation going out. And this is actually the formation of the pituitary gland. So you've got, this is going to be the anterior pituitary gland. And the one coming from the neurotube is the posterior pituitary gland. And the notochord is the where it finally finishes cranially, that's going to be the Turkish saddle, which is where the pituitary gland sits. And the Turkish saddle is the cella turcica, where that's the end of the bone. All the rest of the notochord will degenerate and become the nucleus pulposus in the intervertebral discs. So that's the final remnants of this. And so you can kind of see how the endoderm meets with the ectoderm there and that's giving you the pituitary gland and the rest of the mouth is from the ectoderm which is going to give you the skin and all that um, material. So now we moved about to, to week five and these dil dilatations, these vesicles will f segment further. So this one here, this one here, and this one here. You can see how they're bent. We've got a, a turn, so it's kind of spinal cord coming up and then we completely flex like this. So the first flexure, which is between the spinal cord and the rhombencephalon, so this flexure here, so kind of through here, that would be called the cervical flexure. And then this flexure that's happening through the mesencephalon, which is kind of through here, that's the cephalic flexure. Now at week five, these vesicles will start to separate further. The proencephalon separates into two. We get the telencephalon and the diencephalon, which you've all heard of. So the proencephalon splits further into the telencephalon and the diencephalon, whereas the mesencephalon just stays as the mesencephalon. Meso or messy means middle, so you should be able to work out what that's going to become, the mid, the mid something. And then finally the rhombencephalon, which is the, the rhombus forming, that is going to give you the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. And that's the final vesicles that will come out of this particular tube. So the secondary vesicles, just to um, reiterate, the telencephalon, tele means at a distance, like telephone or television. So tele means it goes away. So actually what happens is the primary will start to grow out. The diencephalon will stay as is. The mesencephalon will stay as the middle. And the met and the mile will form kind of here and here. So the adult structures, of the telencephalon, so what will be the final structures in the adult? Tesencephalon really makes the cerebrum, so the cerebral cortex, whereas the diencephalon will make like the hypothalamus, the thalamus, the pineal gland, and all the surrounding areas of the thalamus. The mesencephalon will give you the midbrain, the metencephalon, well, this is the area here. The reason why I didn't close it is that's going to be the fourth ventricle there. And so coming out of the back there is going to be the cerebellum. So the metencephalon will make the cerebellum, but also the front bridge, which is the pons. And then finally, the myelencephalon will give you the medulla. And then the continuation of that is going to be the spinal cord. Now, all the cells of your brain and your spinal cord, which I'll draw in a second, that's learning outcome three, um, come from this tube. So all the cells in that tube, which is going to be all the cells around here, 
In the middle, we've got a space where fluid will go, and so this is in here. So if you were going to come up through the spinal cord, that hole in the spinal cord is a central canal. If you go all the way up, as you come into the brainstem, it's going to be the fourth ventricle. So in there, it's the fourth ventricle. As you move up into the midbrain, it goes into the cerebral aqueduct. So we go through like so. And then we go into the, into the proencephalon, and that's going to go now into the ventricles of the brain. So we go through the third ventricle, which is separating the thalamus and so forth. And then we go into the um, telencephalon or the cerebrum, and that's the ventricles. So it's going to be the, the um, lateral ventricles and so forth. So the anterior, the posterior and lateral is going to be the drainage point there. And so that's the first learning outcome there. We've seen how the, it starts to develop, how the plate forms, how it starts to crest up, close completely in the cervical region, zip shut cranially and caudally, shuts at about day 25 here, 27 here, and then the three vesicles and how they further manifest there. And so that's the first learning outcome for this lecture. We'll now move on to learning outcome two. Okay, so moving on to the second learning outcome, which is looking at the actual histology of the neurotube. So here we've got the neurotube that's closed here. So we've closed it, we've zipped it cranially, we've zipped it caudally until the whole entire neural tube has closed completely. And so this is now a representation of what that tube would be like from the whole length of the embryo. So from the down to the coccyx, so this is the vertebrae in black, down to the coccyx, all the way up to the top of the brain. This is the same pattern in. So we can see these blue cells, which are the neural tube, just like here. And what these, these, these cells are is the neuroepithelium. And they are like a pseudostratified um, type of epithelium. And so what they'll do initially is they will be mitotically active and they will start replicating. Now they will form, the, the first type of cell that they will produce are the neuroblasts and they will kind of migrate into t two paired segments. So a group will kind of sit up here like so. So that's going to be what we call the ala plate and these are just all neuroblasts sitting in this kind of circular plate on either side. So this is the neural tube. This would be the back of the embryo because as you can see, you're looking down, you're looking down on the embryo. Okay, so the neural tube has now closed. So looking at the top, like so, this would be the roof of the, the roof plate of the neural tube. And these cells have made new cells which come out and sit out in this area here. So these two areas, these two plates, which are paired, so they're the same but on opposite sides, these are just neuroblasts, and at this t point in time, they're just the cell bodies. Now moving to the front, or the ventral segment, there's another two that sit at the front like that, and these are the basal plates. Okay, so we've got in red, the basal plates, and they're forming the neuroblasts, which are going to make the neurons. And at the back, we've got the basal plates. And so that's going to be the roof, and that's going to be the floor. Okay, and so these cells in here are going to be quite actively making this in these two groups of cells. So they're the neuroblasts. And the area of that future brain or spinal cord is going to be the, the mantle layer of the... And now because they've got the bodies in there, you could probably guess that that's going to be where the grey matter is for the spinal cord and the brain. And so that will continue to happen for some time. Now, on parallel to it, so sitting outside the cord, so sitting kind of out here, there's another group of cells and I'll draw these ones in blue, okay? These are, so another group of cells sit actually outside the whole 
area and these are called the neural crests. So this is, we spoke about the neural crest over here. The neural crest cells, they do a lot of things, but this is one area that they do. They sit on either side of the developing neural tube. And just like these areas, they just form in the cell bodies and in these two areas on either side of the developing tube. And these are just future neurons like so. And so that's, they're going to carry out for a period of time. And then what they'll do is they'll start sprouting. And so the first ones to kind of go are the basal plate ones. And they will start shooting their axons out of the actual whole cord. And they will, so they're going to put projections out on either side. I'll bring it a bit closer. So you can see this is the basal plate and they're shooting their axons out, like so. Okay, so you get the picture there. Now, what's happening in here, they've kind of now, so the, remember this is the whole, the whole length of the cord, they've kind of diminished all the neurons they're gonna make. So they've made all the neuroblasts that they're gonna make. And so what they will do now is they'll fit these epithelial cells. They now differentiate and to start to make glial cells, so glial blasts. So they'll make certain things like astrocytes um, and oligodendrocytes. So th those, those two cell types are going to go and intermingle with, with the neurons. So the astrocytes will actually come in into these areas. And at the same time, you've got vascular mesenchyme, so blood vessels coming in from the outside inwards, the astrocytes will kind of um, work with that and the neuron to form the connection. And that's probably going to be the future blood-brain barrier. Whereas the oligodendrocytes will probably move a bit out. So they'll move outside the, the mantle layer into the marginal layer. So that, that's going to sit out here a bit more. Okay, And so that area there is going to be white matter. So that this area in here is grey, this area in here is grey, and anything outside that is white matter. And then finally, once all these neuroepithelial cells have made the glial blasts, they've kind of done all the differentiation that they're going to do, and they're going to regress uh, into a smaller canal now. So that will get smaller. Into, and if this is in the spinal cord, it's going to just be a small little hole now like so, and those cells that made all the cells that we just created are now just going to line this little hole, and this little hole is going to be called the central canal. And those cells that line it are going to be called the epidemal cells, and they're the ones with little uh, projections, little cilia, which are going to help in some places produce CSF, but in other places just push it around. And so that's the ependymal cells, which are the lining areas of that. So let's go back. So we've got the, these basal cells will shoot, shoot in neurons out of the spinal cord. And these neural crest cells, what are they gonna do? They're gonna become, they're gonna have two projections. They're gonna have one that's gonna come in like so. And so they're bringing a central process in to the ala plate, like so. so. That's coming into the cord, whilst the peripheral will come and meet with the red ones that are coming out. So they will follow th these guys, like so. And so what this is going to produce is a future spinal nerve. And so the red projections is going to be the motor, and the neural crest cells are the sensory, okay? So that's going to come in to the cord like so. And so what we can do now is we can draw... So this is going to... And the, the ala plates, these cells are going to either um, go down the cord or up the cord. So these are going to be more interneurons or associate neurons. So they're going to rather go out. They're just going to stay and either go up a level or down a level. And so now if we draw it in, what the cord will start to look like is
like so. So all this area in here is going to be the red area is going to be for the motor neurons. So all this area is motor neurons. And they're coming out like so, which we drew. And they're coming out like so. Now, an interesting or an important point, should I say, that you should know is in the spinal cord, um, you're always going to be at the kind of front medial aspect. So this area here is going to be somatic motor. Okay, so this is going to be somatic motor, whereas out here is going to be visceral motor, visceral motor. So this is for the body, moving the body like muscle, skeletal muscles, whereas this is visceral. So they're going to in, uh, innovate viscera, like smooth muscle, like cardiac muscle, and like, um, say, blood vessels and so forth. So that's important to know. And they're going to come out like so. Whereas the neurocrest cells are sitting out like so. Oh, it's a bit skewed there. They're sitting out, they're sitting out like here now. And these are going to become the dorsal root ganglion. So they're the sensory that are going in sensory like this. So this is the big dorsal root ganglion coming out like this. Okay, meeting up with the red, which is, that's the ventral root into the dorsal root. And that together are going to give you a spinal nerve. So this is a spinal nerve coming out like so. So motor's going out. Motor is the first one and that goes towards muscles. Sensory follow it. And so it's really these fibers that are going to come down and the neurocrest cells will follow it. Now that this area here is obviously white matter. So you're not going to have, and so this is going to be the horns like this and going into the black, this will look like so. So that's going to be the grey matter here in black. So the black's the sensory area and then the red is the motor. But you can, what you can see is you can see the, the grey matter being all in this with the horns, the ventral and dorsal horns. Okay. So really it should have come in more like in the back like that. And that should have come in a bit more like so, but you get the picture. So that's the grey matter. So this is where all the neuroblasts were created. Um, and outside here is the white matter. So what's going to happen there is those oligodendrocytes will come out and myelinate these as they're going out to the ventral root. So as they're coming through like this, they're going to get myelinated by the oligodendrocytes. So all this area is the white matter like so and all this in the middle is the grey matter here and that's the central canal if we're in the spinal cord and so this is really how it all developed um, all the all the glials so we've got the oligodendrocytes astrocytes um, <clears throat> and the microglia is going to come in from the vasculature so the vascular mesenchyme which is developing outside from the mesoderm that's going to migrate in and help to give the microglia of the central of the spinal cord and brain. And so they're more like a phagocytic cell. The neurocrest cell, we could see what they did. They're the sensory project, projecting the central axon in and the peripheral go out to the body. The other thing that the neurocrest cell will do, at least in this area, is it will um, develop the swan cells. So the swan cells will myelinate the peripheral nerves. So even down here, so once it comes out of the cord, these ventral nerves will get myelinated by swan cells, whereas in here they're the oligodendrocytes, which came from the neural tube. Um, finally, with as I said, with the ventral and um, somatic um, areas of neurons, same with here. So you've got um, the, the visceral, visceral and somatic, and somatic, visceral and somatic. What we'll have in a certain region, so from approximately T1 to L2, a huge 
abundance of this, these visceral um, motor neurons. And so what that will actually give you is another horn because there's so many of them. That's the intermediate horn. And you can see that more in the thoracic upper lumbar area. And that's because you've got so many um, visceral motor neurons developing that, which are going to be for the sympathetic nervous system predominantly. And those will still come out the ventral horn, but they'll have a separate sympathetic chain. And the sympathetic chain again, just like here, comes from the neurocrest. So the sympathetic train will, chain will sit outside on either side of the um, ventral column, and they will have preganglionic neurons coming in and the postganglionic neurons are actually neurocrests which go out to the effector. And so that's essentially what happens at the cord. Now that central canal is the whole length of the cord and you'll go all the way up. So you, now you come in up. This is obviously in a cross section. You come up and here it is here. So this is the central canal as we come up towards the rhombencephalon. Now, as we saw all the neurons that, uh, that made the spinal cord, as we come up to the brain, the same thing happens with the ala plate and the basal plate, but instead of the central canal making the spinal cord, now as we come up into the rhombencephalon, that's going to be made by the fourth ventricle. So the fourth ventricle changes in position. It kind of becomes a whole big back area, which you could see out here. But all the same cells manifest. So what makes the pons, what makes the cerebellum, what makes the medulla comes from the fourth ventricle. As we go up through the midbrain, that's the cerebral aqueduct. So the cerebral aqueduct makes all the midbrain, just like we saw there. And as we go into the proencephalon, firstly we go into the diencephalon. The diencephalon, just like we saw here, is made by the third ventricle. And then we go through the interventricular foramen or the foramen of Munro, which goes now into the lateral ventricles. And then just like we saw here, all the neurons ever made is going to make the brain or the, or the cerebrum. So the lateral ventricles, the horns, the anterior horn makes the frontal lobe. The body makes the temporal lobe. The inferior horns make the, uh, sorry, the the body makes the parietal lobes, the inferior make the temporal lobes, and the inferior, or sorry, the posterior makes the occipital lobe. And that's the same way, just as we saw there. And so that's really the histology, and that's how it manifests like so. And so what we can do now is finish with the third learning outcome and see how the cord, position of the cord changes as we um, grow in, in the embryo. So the neural tube is the whole length. So we saw at, so when it closes cranially, we saw it close here at the lamina terminalis. And then as it goes caudally, we see it end right down the bottom. And that's the whole length of the neural tube, which we saw kind of like that. Now at the most caudal end, at about the third month, the third month of the embryo, you can see the black vertebra. So here in blue is the neural tube and it comes all the way down to the coccyx. So that's C1 there, that's S1 there, and that's L2 there. So that's the whole length, all the way down. That's the neural tube. Same way we saw it develop all the way to the brain, all the way down. So the neural tube ends right down the coccyx. Now surrounding it in red, is the dura matter. So the dura, which comes in from mesenchym, whereas the pia and arachnoid, I believe, comes from the neural crest, um, those, the arachnoid and the pia, is more intimate with the tube, whereas the dura comes kind of externally in from the mesoderm out here. Um, that comes all the way down and surrounds at the coccyx level. Now, as the embryo grows, what happens is the neural tube doesn't really grow relative to the, the vertebra growing. And so what we see, the vertebra get much bigger, much bigger, much bigger. And so by the time the baby is born, so we've got a newborn now, um, the, the end of the spinal cord or the end of the neural tube is actually about L3. Okay, so here we saw it down in the coccyx level, but because the vertebrae get much bigger, much bigger, much bigger, it all, it's almost like the spinal cord shrinks. And so what happens at birth, the end of the cord's at about L3, 
And then by the time you're an adult, the chord in blue, you can see here, is now ending at about L1. Okay, so the end of the spinal cord, which we call is the conus medullus, that ends at L1. Important to know anatomically. Now, where it once was, so where the pia, an arachnoid, where it first started, it has this long stretched little projection that goes down to about S1. That is what we call the phylum terminale, and that's this long little projection that goes down like so. So that's the, the remnants of where the cord kind of originated and got stretched all up. But that's just kind of pia matter, all right? Whereas the red dura, it continues to encase it all, but it, the sac itself goes all the way down to S1. And so this is still filled with CSF, so we're going to have CSF bathing the spinal cord. And that dural sac goes down to S1. It kind of it closes off there, but we've got a continuation, which is a now ligament down to the original coccyx. So from about S1 down to the coccyx, we've just got this um, closure of the dural sac, which we now is a ligament, and that's the coccygeal ligament. Whereas the dural sac will still remain open at S1. And so that's the sac going down like so. And so, well actually, I'll put in a point here. We can, we sit, we've seen here how the spinal nerves are formed, sensory from the neural crest and the motor from the um, basal plate. So here collectively we've got a spinal nerve. Now in the embryo, going back to three months, the spinal nerves come out at their respective levels, which is at almost the same height as the vertebra. Okay? However, because we have saw that stretching occur, we've got now these spinal nerves that come all the way down like so. And so they, they've been stretched because they're still going through their intervertebral foramen, but because they've been stretched out, um, because remember where the spinal cord ends at L1, we've got this cord-like projection which is just spinal nerves in cords and that's called the chorda chordoquina, which is the horse's tail. And that's long projections of spinal nerves. So they still come out at the same level of the cord, but where they go through their respective vertebra, they have been stretched out. And so why that's important, well, if you need to take some CSF for sampling, you don't want to go in higher up because you'll hit the spinal cord and cause um, neurological defects. So what you can do is because you've got the dural sac still down to S1, opening like this, so you've still got CSF there, you can put a needle in at about L4, L5 and you can go in and get your CSF but you're only going to hit at worst um, one of those spinal nerves in the quarter corner and you're not going to cause a great deal of problem whereas if you went much higher up you'd go straight into the cord. And so that's really the basis of the development of the nervous system. We saw in the first learning outcome how the tube closed, where it closed, how it zipped for um, cranially and cordially, how that developed, how that, the vesicles manifested. Then we looked at the cells and how they developed, how they differentiated, how you got neuroblasts, how you got glioblasts, how you got sensory, how you got motor, how the neurocrests, and then how the position of the cord continued. Now, I'll leave it there, however, I will do a separate lecture on how the spinal cord develops in the brainstem. So I'll actually look particularly in the brainstem and how those visceral and motor um, neurons um, arrange differently because of the fourth ventricle, because that will open it right up at the back and so these are going to arrange differently and that will explain the nuclei and the tracks within the brainstem. So that that will be it for the nervous system, the development of the nervous system. I hope that that made sense. Thank you.